Hello and welcome back to Project Electrolyte, the 1972 Plymouth Satellite Tesla Swap. In this episode, I'll be building battery boxes for the 16 Tesla Model S battery modules. This is a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. Matt over at Stealth EV sourced this pack for me and I'll be using his cell tap boards that I'll wire to the BMS in a future episode. This was probably the biggest challenge for me so far, not knowing where to start. I got a file from GrabCAD to put into Fusion 360 and start figuring out some of the dimensions that would work for my car. Here's six of the modules kind of stacked on top of each other. I was originally gonna to try to fit 12 under the hood. Six and six kind of stacked. Uh, ends up, I can't fit that many but the box of six will work anyway. I started by cutting out each side on the CNC plasma table. This is a little Langmuir Systems table. It cuts the aluminum really well. This is eighth inch aluminum. I had it kind of pre-drill all of the rail mounting points for me. I just chased them with a drill bit and then riveted in these half inch angle aluminum uh, strips. The strips are the same length as the battery modules. It'll support the module as well as provide a point to uh, fasten the module on each rail. From the outside, um, you can see it looks pretty strong, which it is. Each one of these strips added quite a bit of strength to the sides of the box. Here's four of them stacked up. This is the coolant manifold side of the module. Each, each battery module has a, two loops in and out. They'll all be in parallel flow once assembled. So I had to stack it on its side. Originally I thought I would stack it vertical, but I couldn't fit as many modules that way. Um, I decided to use one inch square aluminum tubing for the coolant manifold. It just fits in the box real well, so I've got 12 fittings on this one. There'll be uh, 12 inputs, 12 outputs. All of the flow will be parallel flow throughout the entire battery pack. And then once the battery modules are assembled, I can put the sides on the box and then the top. This is just test fitting at this point. I had to figure out where the box would fasten to the frame of the car. So I've got it aligned where I wanted. I made some marks and now I had to figure out a way to mount it to the frame with plenty of extra scrap aluminum after cutting the main portions of the box. I cut out some little shapes here that fold into a nice angle with gussets. I just used a zero kerf cut line, which is makes it easy to fold. And then I kind of in assembly line fashion folded the 90 degree side of each gusset and then welded them solid. And then folded up the sides and and finished welding. Now they're ready to clean up so I can fasten them to the box. I'm using six of these mount points on the bottom of the box and another four tabs to mount a uh, another box on top of this box. I'll have a, a lower box mounted to the frame, the upper box will be mounted to the lower box. And once these are fully welded around they're really solid. Give me a nice hard point that it will bolt right through the, the frame. This is uh, the K member that would normally house the engine, but now this is where the, the battery box will be mounted. Once it's in place here, you can see I still have quite a bit of room for a top box. So this is six modules on edge, and now I'll be stacking another four flat on, on top of it. Those ears that I had on the, on the lower box will bolt through to this top box before I assemble the batteries. This is what it looks like when it's uh, stacked on top of each other. Again, the same, same design. Uh, I've got the rails that uh, will, the, the battery modules will bolt to those rails. Plenty of clearance under the hood. Um, I did have to stagger the boxes. So the lower box fits next to the firewall. The top box goes out towards the radiator just enough room for airflow from these radiator fans except they're kind of staggered on this uh, mounting system I bought so I, I need to redo this and, and stack put both fans lower so that it will clear the battery boxes. I also have some modifications to do on the radiator. I don't need this 
transmission cooler, so I cut it out of the bottom of the radiator. Just used a circular saw, then I made a patch panel to go back in. Now I can have threaded outputs that will feed the pumps. I need two cooling systems, one for the batteries and one for the motor. So what I decided to do is take this big, um, you know, big block radiator and separate it into two radiators. So I sliced right through the tanks all the way to the core, made some block off plates. So now each system will just flow through its own core. I welded these plates back together. And then now it's a, uh, a big radiator that's partitioned into two smaller radiators. The uh, motor will use the smaller side, the batteries use the bigger side. And I've got threaded inputs and outputs that will feed the pumps. Next, I cut out the original fan shroud uh, so I could make my own and mount the fans where I wanted to. I liked the frame of this shroud, so I thought I would just cut it out, make a new panel, and weld that back onto the original frame. So both fans now are going to be mounted at the lower half of the radiator. That gives it plenty of clearance for the top box. The fans will uh, have enough clearance to move the air as well. And this kind of shows what that looks like. Both fans are below that top box, which is staggered forward from the bottom box. Finally, having this done, I can pull out the K-member. Uh, this would normally hold the engine. You can see the suspension mounts on the side. Um, I'm ready to paint this. So I took it outside. Got uh, a number of coats of paint on it. While it was drying in the nice sun, I had some nice warm days for this. It cured really nice. Um, I went ahead and finished my brake lines. This is copper nickel brake line. I made every mounting point secure with a riv nut. I really like these. They hold very secure, nice uh, deep threads. And uh, made some tabs to hold the, the little dash three fitting that'll go to each stainless brake line. While I was at it, I decided to drop the motor and rear suspension out. I had some more brake lines to finish in the rear and it was just easier to make some clearance. So I got these routed around and ready for the brake lines. This whole uh, rear, rear assembly comes out really easy right now. Um, four mounting points, two of the push rods for the suspension and it's out. It'll be a little more difficult once the uh, cooling lines are, are hooked up. With everything uh, finished on the brakes and the paint is cured. I went ahead and just reassembled the entire front end. So K-Member went back in, finished the suspension with the, uh, the, the power steering rack, the sway bar, everything's all uh, Loctited and torqued and final assemble is done. Here's a look under the car. It's kind of nice now. I can uh, get a feel for the, the ride height, the stance since it's sitting on its own suspension front and rear. No weight in the car yet, no batteries, so it'll, it'll ride a little bit lower, but I have full adjustability over the, the ride height of the car. Definitely looks good with the nice fat tires front and rear. Here's a look at the back underneath. I can still fit some wider tires, but it's kind of a cross between rolling resistance and traction. I'll have to get a feel for what I need. And the uh, rear suspension in the trunk, that's about the normal ride height position. I'll just have to set the, uh, the preload once I get the full weight in the car. I only had 10 modules under the hood, so the remaining six are going to go in the trunk. Still trying to figure out if I'm going to go flat or build another uh, stack of six like I did under the front. And this is just a view of the front. Well, that's it for now. Next time I'll be finishing up the battery boxes and I'll start the wiring. If you like these videos, please subscribe. You can ring the bell for notifications. I appreciate any thumbs up and all the comments. I'll see you next time.